Donald Trump has announced he will be running to be the Republican candidate in the 2024 presidential election, and he's running on his record. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and my fellow citizens, America's comeback starts right now. Two years ago, when I left office, the United States stood ready for its golden age. Our nation was at the pinnacle of power, prosperity, and prestige, towering above all rivals, vanquishing all enemies, and striding into the future, confident and so strong. In four short years, everybody was doing great. Men, women, African Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans, everybody was thriving like never before. There was never a time like this. We turned the page on decades of globalist sellouts and one-sided trade deals, lifted millions out of poverty, and together we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. When the virus hit our shores, I took decisive action and saved lives and the U.S. economy. And by October of the same year, America was roaring back with the number one fastest economic recovery ever recorded. How about that? Of course, Trump didn't respond decisively to COVID. Instead, um, he went on television suggesting people could try injecting bleach. But even if it was purely coincidental, he could, in theory, have a decent economic story to tell about his time in power. In particular, inflation was lower than it is now. As I say, this was purely coincidental. But Trump is damaged by the recent midterms, which saw his candidates pull down the Republican vote. This was his explanation for why that happened. Much criticism is being placed on the fact that the Republican Party should have done better. And frankly, much of this blame is correct. But the citizens of our country have not yet realized the full extent and gravity of the pain our nation is going through. And the total effect of the suffering is just starting to take hold. They don't quite feel it yet, but they will very soon. I have no doubt that by 2024, It will sadly be much worse, and they will see much more clearly what happened and what is happening to our country, and the voting will be much different. 2024. So that was Donald Trump saying that what's going to save his campaign is that everything is going to get much, much worse in the next two years. You're not ready for me now. We'll wait until you're really effing miserable in 18 months. Then you'll want me back. Is that a good pitch? I mean, as it stands... Uh, right now, I would say that Donald Trump has a very weak uh, pitch. Things change very quickly in politics. So I don't know if that's going to be true for a long time. But as it stands now, it's very weak. And I think that there's one reason for that. I don't think it's actually necessarily to do with his presentation of things. Um, I think it's because Murdoch uh, has said pretty openly that he is not going to back Trump in a presidential election, that he would even consider Uh, backing a Democrat over Trump, which I'm not even sure is true. I think that when it comes to it, the Murdoch press will always back a Republican. But uh, clearly, he's trying to essentially bluff about it and is is very serious about the extent to which he doesn't want to see uh, Trump win the primaries. And I think without that clout, uh, without that backing by the media establishment, without, you know, Fox News, without the New York Post, without the Wall Street Journal, um, I think it will be very tough um, for Trump to win another election. So I don't think he's in a strong position to run right now. And and I don't think it's because of some uh, sort of revelation or moral uplifting within the Republican Party. I think that the core of the Republican Party has been fundamentally changed by Trump. I think the the space in terms of like the the the, the space rightwards that the uh, Republican Party operates in that Trump created is still very much there. I think Trumpism also made the Republican Party very aware that there's an incredibly fundamentalist uh, extreme base that is not just made up of older people, but actually there is a kind of young generation there as well um, that is very committed, that is very extreme, that it has to hold on to in order to to win, but also it has to hold on to that base in a way that doesn't completely irreversibly alienate 
potential swing voters. And I think that the stain of the 6th of January insurrection um, really clings to Trump in that way. And, and it's very specifically associated with him. And that is alienating um, at the moment to potential swing voters. So they need someone who can kind of cultivate and charm that central base, um, but without that particular association with um, the insurrection and the kind of denialism about the election um, results. And that, and that's where uh, a Ron DeSantis figure, who is the um, governor of Florida, who is very much seen as a front runner for um, the primaries, he still has those kind of central ingredients, those very extreme positions. Uh, he is against abortion, even in the case of incest and trafficking and rape. He's trying to ban critical race theory. He's very uninterested in climate change. He's very much about lowering taxes, government spending. He was also very, very bad on um, COVID in a similar way to Trump in terms of, you know, not really putting in uh, stay-at-home mandates, not locking down, et cetera, not having a mask mandate, even at the height of the pandemic. Um, so he kind of represents that kind of core of Trumpism, but outside of the Trump package that is at the moment quite stigmatized. But the Trumpist base has not disappeared. Um, the effect is still there. But I think that for, for Murdoch, for the Republican establishment, he is too much of a political liability at the moment because of that association with, with the insurrection. Uh, things can change, so I don't, you can't hold me to it. In a year, it might all be different. But if the primaries were to happen tomorrow, I think it would be very difficult for a for Trump to win them. Um, but I do think that obviously there is an interesting question here, which will affect what a potential Trump candidacy could look like and how it could do, which is, you know, who will run for the Democratic ticket? I don't think that Biden is a shoe in I think he, you know, is not very popular. He is very fragile. He comes off very fragile. I think he's probably seen as too old. Um, to run again. And Kamala Harris has been basically completely absent. I don't know what's going on there, but definitely the Democratic establishment are not interested in pushing Kamala Harris as a potential successor. It's an interesting question, you know, and it will probably impact uh, how well a Trump candidacy uh, would go. So for me, that that kind of question of who would run on the Democratic ticket is is thrown up there as well. Of course, it might just be Biden anyway, but I don't think it's as certain as it otherwise would be um, if it was any other Democratic president. Mm -hmm.